Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. everyone, it is Moonwalking Kingdom back at again, and this time we are here in my college campus uh, filming a video but about not one, but two biopic updates. Feel free to put down some comments because we're good, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, the first thing I want to announce is we have a new casting. Um, uh, Lauren Harrier is Suzanne de Passe. If I pronounced that right, please let me know if I pronounced that wrong, please. You just hear the new set photos from that. Um, they're here in, in this tweet, thank you Veronica for the tweet, is explaining that she was a creative assistant to Motown founder Barry Gordy and is credited with convincing Gordy to sign the Jackson 5 to his label. She created a critical role in bringing the band and other Motown sensations to live tel to live television. I can't even read. She worked closely with Michael Jackson from childhood, standing by him as a teacher and a mentor, helping him navigate the music business. Here's a picture of her with Michael, and then here's another picture of Michael, her, and Barry Gordy. Now, a very good friend of mine said that this is probably the worst casting so far. Uh, let me know how you feel about that. Um, I'm seeing some mixed stuff on Twitter about this, you know, all, a lot of things. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's cool that they, they are including her in the biopic. I mean, she was pretty important in that aspect of Michael's childhood career. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Other than that, I don't really have anything else to say about the casting. Other than that, it's a new casting, and it's something that we should be honoring. And, and but, but let's talk about the main topic of this video, because this video is going to be pretty interesting. I just want to um, clarify first that just because what I read here is what I read here, that does not mean it is the truth. Uh, don't believe everything you read. Uh, we, we always stand by that here. Uh, if this, and this goes for anything that you see in the media. Uh, but, um, yeah. And the only reason I'm really bringing out this information is because I'm here to talk about the biopic and everything I see regarding the biopic, if it's something to talk about. But yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna wait until I see the movie myself. Um, what's gonna really prove what's gonna be there is from a trailer, from everything I see visually, rather than just articles or other things. But I mean, casting announcements are just casting announcements. But let's get right into this. Um, let's just study this. I'm gonna be reading along with you guys and then I'll be stopping if I have to say something because we got a lot to go through with this. Oh my God, y'all. So thank you to Insino on Twitter for this. Uh, so back when he was alive, the attorney Harry Weitzman and I used to chat from time to time about Michael Jackson. Howard was one of the many lawyers that represented Michael over the years. After Jackson died in 2009, Weitzman managed the many, many, litigation matters for the Jackson estate, a massive client that his old firm still represents today, three years after his own death. Howard was a true believer in Michael's innocence, or at least he always said he was a, a true believer. Despite all the bad optics of paid off accusers, a criminal trial over seven counts of alleged child molestation, and in 2019, the, the incendiary documentary, Leaving Neverland, in which Wade Robson and James Safechuck described in explicit detail being groomed and molested as children by the so-called King of Pop. Very rare you hear me bring up those two people on the channel, right? Oh boy. Um, I have a rule where I don't really bring up the allegations on the channel. I actually made a video about why I don't really like talking about them too much. But since this is in relevance to the biopic, um, this is going to be about the allegations because this is about this this article is about the allegations and how they're going to implement them in the movie but again i don't want to believe anything i read so let me know how you feel about it because me personally i have my thoughts and i want to talk, put, bring them on to you this is in no way for me to really advertise which i you know i yeah but again we're here to talk we're here to discuss and we want to do the best thing that we can do to for, for this documentary to humanize because let me tell you so far it seems like they're doing it because apparently prince jackson loved the script uh, taj was crying over jafar you know the estates behind this family behind this so i'm trusting the process we have to trust the process with this because the more that we 
feed into stuff like this um it's gonna be crazy but but again we're, we're gonna keep on reading this and i'm gonna tell you how i feel but yeah wow like many i never knew what to think about jackson Yes, it all looked terrible, and the Leaving Neverland guys seemed pretty credible. Oh, boy. Despite the obvious incentive to profit off their notoriety, and the fact that they have been both previously testified for Michael, but MJ was never convicted of any crimes, and when we talked, Howard always had great excuses for Michael's weird behavior. Oh, oh shoot. We, we're already starting somewhere at evidence that each accuser was out for money or fame or revenge or something. I often point out that Weitzman collected millions of dollars in legal fees in exchange for his beliefs, but Howard also represented OJ, and let's just say that privately, he did not offer the same full-throated defense of that former client. So if you want to pause to read this, uh, you can, but I'm not going to be reading further because we're going to be talking about the biopic portion of this article. I'm going to have here because um, they have they say something in the top here. Uh, these projects all have something in common. I mean, they're probably referring to, uh, if we go back to the estate planning area, they think they're talking about This Is It and um, Vegas and like the Cirque Show and the musical. Uh, so uh, they ignore the allegations against Jackson that consumed the final third of his life, focusing instead of his rise to stardom and that amazing music, uh, which they have done very well. And that's been the estate's whole strategy. And it has worked. Even as Leaving Neverland re-reigned re, re the outrage with Oprah doing a special with the accusers and some radio stations pulling MJ. Uh, yeah, and let me tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. You know, this is exactly why I don't even bring attention to these things on a regular basis because, you know, it's Michael Jackson. He's never gonna get canceled. He's never ever going to get canceled. This biopic is going to do the complete, well, the musical has done the opposite. The Cirque Show's done the opposite. It's selling out, all, the, all these shows. It's Michael Jackson, come on now. Like, my God, yo, I'm like screaming outside because it's the truth, man. Like, I know I have said numerous times, this is something I really don't like covering, but it's the truth. You can never cancel Michael Jackson. You can never cancel anybody that has been um, falsely accused of anything. You know, especially when they're big and iconic. So you just can't do that. But anyway, biopic portion. Uh, so the, here they're talking about just the stars and all that. And, um, and that the biopic wants you, uh, well, the public really, because again, this, this film is really designed for the public. Um, and it's going to be very convincing that Michael Jackson was innocent, uh, in the movie. Um, so let's, um, go to the script here. Out of respect for the filmmakers and creative process, I don't want to reveal too much. But given the serious allegations against Jackson in the movie, how we reached millions of people with a specific version of events around that time where lit litigation between the estate and leaving Neverland accusers are expected to go on trial. Uh, amid a boom lately of musical biopic line gates universal thing the movie could do bohemian rhapsody numbers and potentially more a hundred percent that movie got the nine or ten million dollars uh and jackson was a much bigger star than freddie mercury um so the michael script oh boy here we go so in this this is technically saying that the allegations are the first thing in the movie this if it were to actually happen, because again, this is not confirmed. This is just a claim at best. This is nothing but a claim. This is nothing like, like again, I can't believe everything. But Michael Scripp opens with Jackson Star staring out from his Neverland bedroom as the police arrive to strip search him. Part of the 93 investiga investigation to statements about Jackson's anonymy made by Jordan Chandler. The script goes to, to great lengths to minimize and downplay the actual claims. Uh, it's a great lengths to minimize the downplay of actual claims. Uh, and then there's Branca. Oh, yeah. Oh, so so they do talk about the phone call. When Jordan's father saying his real goal was to Troy's ex-wife and Jackson's career, which is true. Um, that, you know, that's how... They set him up uh, for Michael to get, you know, falsely accused. There's Branka, Miles Teller, uh, and Johnny Cochran. Cochran. Wow, I said, I said Cochran. What the fuck is wrong with me? Discussing the claims as an extortion attempt. There's also a lengthy and pretty grueling scene of Jackson actually being strip searched and photographed totally naked. Oh, dang. While surrounded by cops and, lo and lawyers. This assault, this scorching trauma, will shake him to the core and never leave him, the script reads. The clear message, Michael was a victim. And uh, now they're basically saying um, uh, the script described Jackson as uniquely comfortable around kids 
And at one point, Branca says, it's not the kids I'm worried about, it's the parents. He's opening this door to tons of people that we don't know, and there's a lot of greedy people in the world. Later, Michael laments to his lawyers, I tell the truth, and I, it doesn't matter. I've been around kids my whole life, but now they turn into something ugly. Like, this, this definitely reminds me of, like, the musical, but they're not, like, specifically. Let me, let, let me, let me clarify what I mean about the musical. So the musical has a line, so they don't specifically state the allegations at all. But there's like there's a few lines in the show where he's like, the media, the lies, everything I do gets twisted, you know. So so that I would love them to do something like that in the movie, but obviously expand it. Um, me personally, I wouldn't put the allegations at the first. I mean, it obviously depends on how they do it. Um, so again, I'm waiting till visuals. But most people don't want this to be the first thing and that this should be at the one hour mark of the movie uh because you know it, but but, he, but here's the thing if they did that it'd be your basic cookie cutter biopic where they're kind of going in order from earlier years to his death um i feel like if they did something like this where it, it doesn't just have to be the allegations are first it could be anything it would make the biopic so unique because i i because if you really want to get michael's life in there like like we look at the steve jobs biopic for example that was divided into three acts it didn't even go in order of his life that it was on one or the, the main topics of three separate acts and it, it, it was done so well and it, it's like you know but, but but again this is this is going to do good this biopic is going to do nothing but good for michael's legacy so again even though it's not going to be 100 percent perfect the way it should be the aim is to get the public to appreciate Michael more and also to get his streams up and celebrate. It, this is a celebratory thing. And also you're learning about who Michael Jackson really was. So that's the, 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 the core reason why they're even doing a biopic is to get Michael's... They're, they're, they're humanizing. They are going to humanize him in this movie. And that is nothing but a fact. They are going to humanize him. They're going to do whatever they can to not make him portrayed as perfect they have to have him make mistakes they have to have him um talk about things uh or like the creative process do all that the music the the humanitarian stuff i would love that to be in there i'm pretty sure that will be in there 100 percent, knowing that prince jackson runs heal la and all that stuff um so yeah oh my god dude let's continue then they talk about um how robson and save check aren't in the script um and asked to read this week the week that he was surprised um, I didn't expect my film to have that kind of impact where they would want to make a movie to rebut the allegations. The picture it paints is childlike, caring man, but the truth is the truth is very different. Meanwhile, there's another wrinkle, as I mentioned, and I am not reading this bullshit. Another thing I want to mention is um, my friend actually said that this is like him reminiscing about his past or 93 to, to explain why everything that went, went down the way it did. Starts with 93, and then go into his childhood, the fame, etc. But obviously we knew the narrative that, that would be depicted in the script since the estate and family backed it, plus the team who made it knew and loved him, of course. Another one of my friends said that the film should end at 93, where Michael gets accused for the first time to leave everybody crying and proving that Michael was the victim and all that stuff. Um, but I personally don't think that will happen. Um, you know, it, it, but again, like I said, Humanizing Michael Jackson is the aim for this. Uh, let's go over here. The same time a state is dubbed with the whole HBO thing. I don't like talking about that on here. Uh, Michael Michael Station Circus. Da -da 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 -da. I don't care. Ron Burkle would even let the production film in Neverland. So yeah, this this, this is something that um I actually was gonna talk about because because I would love to see a scene in the movie when Michael Jafar is entering the gates of Neverland and it's a breathtaking scene this is a this this is a, I would want this to be a beautiful scene and he's entering his childhood world and you see all the this it is this is him Neverland is him and Neverland was also inspired by you know Disney you know he loved Disney and Disney was him he loved that stuff he loved theater you know he loved art it's to talk about all that like i would love if because because looking at because again I, i've said this many times the title michael is about the person 
this is going to be about the person. But let's talk about the last section of the article because it talks about music, finally. <laughs> let's go. So I counted about 20 MJ and Jackson 5 songs in the script and at least five separate montage sequences set to his music. One source says the net budget is around 155 million, but I would place it among the most expensive musical biopics ever made. Um, so there's one big disappointment. My buddy Howard Weitzman isn't in the script, despite being around Michael a lot during his fraught days in the 90s. So apparently the filmmakers asked Howard if he wanted to be included, and he died before he, they got a response. So that was all I really wanted to say about this. Um, now they talk about 20 MJ songs. Um, you're, you're obviously going to get your main hits like Billie Jean, Beat It, Thriller, um, all that stuff. But I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that the soundtrack for the movie will also include unreleased songs. Do you want to see unreleased songs in the soundtrack? Because I would personally love it. Like, like, like it, I, I don't think this will ever happen. But imagine an official release for songs like Nightline, Hot Street, Chicago 1945, Dream Away. There's so many possibilities. Apparently, Michael did a cover of Hot Fun in the Summertime by Sly and the Family Stone. There's a lot of great things that they could do with this to draw people into to his music. And they've done that with the musical. They're going to do it with the biopic. So nothing but positive things. Um, I only posted or put brought this article because I, 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 I want to talk about this and just clear up what I think, even though um, a lot of people are probably going to go at me in the comments saying, don't advertise it, and they have every right to do so. Uh, but we're just here to talk. We're, we're, we're just here to discuss and tell, tell you guys the truth, the truth, about what they're doing with the biopic that's, you know, that, that's what every fan is, is, is going to say uh, regarding Michael and how they're going to portray him in the movie. Um, so thank you all for watching this. This was a great video. I loved this. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.